In the previous tutorial, we have interfaced SGP40 air quality sensor and displayed its data on a TFT screen with a quite decent graphical user interface. Now I wanted to take a step further by adding a temperature and a humidity sensor to create a more comprehensive indoor environment monitoring system. In this video, we will be interfacing HDC1080 temperature and humidity sensor alongside the SGP40 air quality sensor, all on the same I2C bus. We will analyze the data exchange using a logic analyzer and explore how to integrate the sensor driver into the ASP32 S3 microcontroller. The collected sensor data will be displayed on 2.8 TFT screen in both numerical and graphical format with board side buttons to toggle between screens, display different data and trigger some animations. By the end of this video, we will have built a fully functional indoor environment monitoring device. So without further ado, let's put the show on the road. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before. With a lot of features, PCBWay has launched the 7th project design contest. Who knows, you may be one of the winners who is going to get quite nice prices. Alright, so here's the setup that we are going to use in this tutorial where we are going to interface uh, the HDC1080 uh, temperature and the humidity sensor uh, and you can see here the SGP40 air quality sensor that we have used in the previous tutorial both sensors are actually connected uh, over A2C uh, on this bus and the MCU ASP32 S3 is interfacing uh, both of them and printing the obtained data on the LCD screen over here. So let's power the hardware and see how things uh, will appear on the screen. All right, so here I'm using uh, the buttons on the side of the uh, board in order to switch between screens. So let me go to the temperature and the humidity screen. And here it is, you can see now the MCU uh, is printing the data both uh, on this bar you can see the temperature is 27 and the humidity is 74 percent which is uh, relatively high uh, and at the same time uh, the data is also being printed uh, on these two charts so this chart will represent the uh, temperature value you can see the reading on the y-axis and this and this chart will represent the uh, humidity data so if I press on the sensor in order to play with the values, you can see the increase will happen instantly, just like that. And the value will be displayed on both the charts uh, and the upside bar over here. Uh, also, I have added an animation uh, to this user interface. Uh, so by holding this button uh, clicked like this, the upper bar will be extended. So in the upcoming tutorial, I'm planning to add the air quality sensor data to show it over here when the uh, bar is extended and it can be shrinked just like that by holding press the down button uh, for three seconds. And also I'm planning to add uh, animations to this page as well. So I will display the temperature and the humidity data over here. You can see that now my MCU is interfacing both sensors and printing their data uh, on separate screens. I'm actually planning to dedicate the upcoming tutorial uh, on this animation uh, feature. So you can see that I can uh, switch between pages uh, with these buttons and you'll see the button initializations in the uh, firmware that we are going to discuss. Uh, so now it's time to hook up the logic analyzer and see all the data being exchanged between the host MCU, ASP32 S3, on this case, uh, and both 
uh, sensors, but of course we are going to focus on the temperature and the humidity sensor in this case. So let me now hook up this logic analyzer uh, using this uh, groove connector over here. So I'm going to hook it up just like that. And now I'm going to connect uh, the logic analyzer uh, to the USB so I can uh, analyze all the exchange data uh, over I squared C bus. All right, so here you can see the logic analyzer software and now I'm going to power up uh, the hardware that I'm using in order to read the I squared C data. And here we have started receiving the uh, exchange packets. So let's stop that and start analyzing the initialization packets. So as we have seen, I have two sensors connected to the I squared C bus, the SPG40 uh, air quality sensor and the temperature and the humidity sensor HDC1080. Uh, so I have two sensors uh, hooked up to the I squared C bus and I can differentiate between them uh, over here uh, depending on the I squared C slave address. So I know that uh, the temperature and humidity sensor slave address is 40 hex and the other one is uh, 59 so here we can see the configuration packet of the uh, temperature and humidity sensor and let me show you that so here we can see the register map and here is the configuration register uh, that has uh, an address uh, 2 hex and it has width of 2 bytes and here we can see its content so every single bit uh, inside this register will configure uh, the sensor. So here what I want to do is to set the temperature for the highest resolution possible. That's why I'm going to set the temperature measurement resolution and the humidity measurement resolution to 14 bits. Uh, so I'm going to uh, set these bits to zero. And the other important thing that I care about is the mode of acquisition it's located here in the 12th uh, bit so when this bit is set to one both temperature and the humidity data uh, are reported when read operation uh, is executed when reading from uh, the temperature register so the sensor is going to report four bytes in total two bytes for the temperature and two bytes for the humidity 14 bits uh, can be evaluated for each parameter and when configuring the HTC 1080 humidity and temperature sensor, you need to uh, you need to pay attention uh, to the fact that uh, the configuration bits are located in the most significant byte. So the first byte should be set to zero. So in total, we are going to set one single bit uh, in this register, and it's the mode of acquisition. And we can see that I have done that uh, over here. So for the configuration packet, I'm executing I squared C write operation followed by the address of the register that we are writing to, which is the configuration register. And here is the content of the uh, register. And we have only one single bit uh, set over here. And it's the mode of acquisition. And after that, we can start read data from the sensor. And we can see that over here. So here I'm executing write operation to the HDC 1080 sensor followed by the address uh, I want to read from. Uh, so when executing this command, the temperature measurement uh, process will start. So it's necessary to leave some time for the sensor to do temperature and the humidity measurement. Uh, and it's actually around uh, five milliseconds. So the uh, read operation is done after a while. Uh, this is actually uh, related to the uh, air quality sensor because the I squared C address is different. So the read is done actually over here, actually around uh, 100 milliseconds. So let's zoom into that. We can see that I'm executing read operation from the temperature and the humidity sensor, and then door, and then four bytes of data are being reported uh, to my MCU ESP32 S3. So two bytes of these. Uh, are the temperature and the other two bytes are the humidity data. Thanks to the mode of acquisition, we were able to read both the temperature and the humidity in one single shot. So that's all related to the sensor interface. Now let's jump into the firmware and see how everything is done over there. All right, so here's the firmware running on the ESP32 S3 uh, on the THMI board that, that we have seen at the beginning of the tutorial. So let's uh, zoom a bit. 
most of the parts uh, here are have been already explained uh, especially the ones that are related to the uh, SPG air quality sensor interface so I'm going to proceed with the ones that I have uh, worked on uh, the ones that are related to interfacing the HDC uh, 1080 temperature and the humidity sensor so for the sake of interfacing the uh, LCD screen I have added two buttons uh, as interrupt uh, and here I am using the button library that I have uh, implemented you can have a look at it so the main function of the button library and I have it over here uh, is to differentiate between uh, click event and long press event and this is done with the help of the initialized interrupt uh, and the button manager function so let me open that in the gpio button so so the button library uh, has a button debounce feature and it can calculate the time uh, since the button is pressed to decide whether the event is long pressed or just pressed so you can dive into the detail of this uh, library this is not the topic of this uh, tutorial uh, anyways so we can start from here uh, where the driver of the i squared c is passed to the hdc 1080 uh, sensor handler so i'm passing the same driver because they are both using the same uh, i squared c uh, driver and then here i'm filling the configuration structure uh, where i'm setting the uh, necessary settings of the sensor so here you can see that i'm setting the resolution of both the temperature and the humidity and then i'm setting the acquisition mode to be temperature and the humidity so i can read both data uh, in one shot and then the configuration function uh, is executed over here so you can see that uh, when everything is stored in this uh, temporary buffer so in the first byte the configuration register address is passed uh, which is 2 and then the configuration array is passed to the same buffer so in total we have 3 bytes and then and then we are using the i squared c driver to send this data over the i squared c bus okay so now having our uh, sensor configured correctly uh, we can now read data from it and this is done in the sensor handling task so the first thing done inside the loop uh, here is uh, the reading request so in the reading request uh, here we are actually sending uh, one single byte and it's the address of the temperature register in order to let the uh, temperature and the humidity sensor conduct measurement operation uh, and then here i'm starting this timer uh, for one single time to execute this callback uh, and this callback will be executed uh, after 100 milliseconds uh, actually this value is in microseconds uh, and we s we have seen that in the uh, logic analyzer interface that after 100 milliseconds of sending the uh, temperature register over r squared c the read operation is done and this is done uh, exactly over here so if we have a look at the conversion timer handler we can see the used uh, callback to execute it's actually over here so let's uh, see what's done inside uh, this callback function so actually uh, as expected uh, in this function read operation will be done so read operation is done uh, for uh, four bytes of data this is taking the size of this uh, temporary buffer and then the obtained data uh, from this buffer is moved uh, to the sensor handler in order to store both the temperature and the humidity uh, data uh, in float format so by doing so we have actually uh, managed to read the uh, temperature data without blocking the MCU uh, because we have used a hardware timer and we could actually obtain the sensor uh, data both temperature and humidity and they can now be accessed using this structure so let me show you an example uh, of accessing the data so here i'm using the temperature and the humidity data in two places so first i'm using them as a compensation for the air quality sensor you may have remembered that uh, in the previous tutorial we were using the air quality sensor without uh, temperature and humidity compensation but since now we have the ability to obtain the surrounding temperature and the humidity we can use them with the air quality sensor so we can obtain more accurate results so you may have noticed that here i'm using the uh, function pointer to obtain both humidity and temperature and also 
In addition to that, I'm using the same data to print it on the TFT display using the, uh, of course, the LVGA library. I'm actually planning to talk about the user interface design uh, and the animations that we have seen uh, in the upcoming tutorial. Uh, so we are going to discuss all the uh, LVGL functions over here, both air quality and temperature and humidity sensor uh, screens. So stay tuned for that. Uh, this actually brings me to the end of this tutorial. You will find everything uh, related to today's tutorial in my GitHub repository. Uh, so you can have a look at it. So if you have liked this video, please uh, like it, share it among your friends and tell them about Use Electronics. See you in the upcoming tutorials and bye bye.